Hello and welcome to Connect. I'm your host, Randy Shabilo. On today's show, we'll have John Waddington giving us some insight into Saskatoon's early photographic history, as well as his upcoming two-volume books on Saskatoon, A Century of Change. As always, we'd like to connect with you. Follow us on Facebook at ConnectYXE, catch past interviews on YouTube, email us at connectyxe at gmail.com, or leave a message at 306-665-3796. Saskatoon and the history of Saskatoon has been captured by many people over the 100 and uh, I'm going to say 25 year history since uh, the start of the city and when it was founded in 1882. One of the people who's been instrumental in compiling a lot of this information and some of the photographs is John Waddington. Uh, he's done a marvelous job on bringing this book together and John thanks for coming down to the studio first of all. My pleasure, thank you. Um, let's talk a bit about photography in Saskatoon and uh, your lifelong history and involvement with it. Uh, I was a photographer growing up in high school and later in the military, but uh, you've taken this to a whole different level and, and bringing some of that history of the stories of the years gone by and some of the old stores that were here. Uh, maybe start with yourself and how you got interested in photography. Uh. I got interested when I found a box in the attic that contained all of the processing equipment that my dad used when he was a youngster. And uh, that was when I was at about grade eight and uh, went on from there. And, and what, what kind of things would you uh, kind of gravitate to? This would be black and white, I'm presuming. When I started out, it was the four by five camera and black and white and, uh, and digital finally ended my career. <laughs> and you were doing this on a professional end as an owner of uh, Phase Two Photographic. Yes. Uh, I actually started out uh, my photographic career doing photography at the university in the uh, biology department. I did the photography and graphic arts for about 12 years. Then I went and joined with uh, Murray Gibson at uh, Gibson Photo on Broadway for a number of years. Uh, following uh, selling out there, I moved over to Creative Professional Photographers and worked with Don Steves for a number of years. Uh, before joining with uh, Marlon Mickeljohn in partnership with Phase 2 Photo, which was downtown. And that's where, uh, like I said, where digital ended my career. <laughs> and I, I suppose it opened up uh, a whole different uh, uh, segment for you, if you will, in terms of your interest in going back and, and looking at some of the photographs that you found. Absolutely. It was actually looking into the history of my my old uh, store downtown on 3rd Avenue uh, that was the beginnings of this book. I found out such things as uh, uh, the building started out in the 30s as a tire shop and uh, at this tire shop uh, it was supposedly the first place in Western Canada to put rubber tires on a tractor. Uh, following that it became a, uh, an insurance store and then they added on to the front of the building and uh, divided it in half and it became a dress shop and a computer store. And uh, then I moved into one half and after both businesses moved out, it's now a restaurant. So that got me interested in, more in downtown. Uh, I also spent many years on the uh, Municipal Planning Commission and District Planning Commission for the city. So. I saw firsthand a lot of changes within the city and, and I kind of wanted to document them. And so those are kind of the reasons that got me into this. And then uh, what really got me going on it, of course, was COVID lockdown. This was my sanity reprieve during that, uh, doing the research on this. But, uh, and now I have gravitated in uh, to doing research on all of the early photographers because having seen all the old pictures uh, that are in the archives and incidentally the archives and the uh, local history department at the library are a marvelous source of information on this. And, uh, but that got me prompted to carry on and do more with the research on who the early photographers were. Uh, and one interesting fact, uh, Ralph Dill was attributed as being one of our first photographers. Uh, and uh, he came here the hard way. He walked from uh, southern Manitoba to North Battleford, spent a few years there, and then came to Saskatoon. 
1906, Henderson's directory said there was two photographers. The other fellow's name was Trot. And I have been able to find very little on him yet. Uh, he was only here for a couple of years. But Ralph Dill has been, has been one of the early, early photographers. And, and a lot of his pictures were used in my book. I find it interesting that, uh, you know, as you travel and you look at other cities and the heritage and history of how they were formed, we actually have photographs, photographs of the, the tents that were here, oh. you know, in the 1890s and so mm -hmm. on with the colonists. And uh, that was basically the start of the formation of the city, if you mm -hmm. will, and, and we've actually got photographs of it. Uh, how has the, uh, the photography industry changed from you know, nitrate film, I think you said, mm -hmm. to what we see now with digital, it, it's, you know, night and day. But some of the dangers that might have been involved with some of the chemicals and processes being used back then. Well, probably the, the most dangerous thing was the, the early flexible film that was used after glass plates were retired uh, was a nitrate base, which is very flammable and will basically burn underwater. And uh, I've discovered that, uh, that one of the early studios, Charmbury Studios, which was downtown in the same building as uh, Mikado Silk, uh, their negative file caught on fire and, and burnt the building down. Um, the other hardships the early photographers had to go through was, uh, in some cases, carrying tens of gallons of pails of water upstairs every day to process their films. And, uh, and not only that, but uh, they had to work hard for their money back then. Uh, the big panorama photos, if you've ever seen them, the long three-footers mm -hmm. that were done with the bank yep. of cameras, they used to sell those for a dollar. <laughs> so is there a story you can share with us about uh, a panoramic photo of the Diefenbaker Dam as an example? Yes, I can. My former partner, Murray Gibson, related that story to me. Uh, he was hired to photograph Diefenbaker when he blew up the, uh, the dynamite at the dam site to initiate the start of the dam. And uh, he got a copy of Diefenbaker's speech and he learned it and he timed it and he got the timing down. And the camera he was using was called a, a circuit or panoramic camera. And uh, you would start it and it would take as much as a 360 degrees pan view of the subject. So he timed the speech and he started the camera panning at the right point so he could photograph the explosion when it happened. Well, unfortunately, Diefenbaker went off script. So if you ever see that photograph, you will see a very small explosion at the end of the photograph. <laughs> and it's, it's just something so simple as that, that you, the best of intentions to try and capture that moment, mm -hmm. uh, you're always ready for something different. I, I am aware of a photographer that uh, did an entire graduation ceremony that uh, the film didn't advance, and that would be me. But uh, uh, if, if you look at the, the way that film and, and eventually coming into color film, mm -hmm. uh, was that a big transition for you, what you saw in the industry? Uh, it, it, it didn't happen near as fast as uh, the digital uh, revolution did. Uh, but yes, it did still, uh, it caused a very large change in the market. Again, it involved a lot more complicated equipment, a lot more complicated processing. So it, it took it out of the hands, whereas a photographer was able to process his film in the basement at night, now pretty much had to have a lab process his film for him. So it, it uh, delayed the process. So was there a, a big transition for you in, in the industry and as an owner uh, looking at ways to develop and process slide film oh, yes. uh, and, and color print film and, and to be able to do it faster because I remember sending things away and taking a week or three weeks to get your slides back in the mail. What, what was that like to try and get it done in an hour? Um. You just spend more money and buy bigger equipment. <laughs> That's been the story of photography. Same thing when digital yeah. came in. It was uh, pro uh, printing machines went from being uh, $20,000 to $120,000. Uh, with, uh, with more overhead involved and the machines didn't last as long. But uh, I always relate the, the transition to my uh, 
my great grandfather who had a woolen mill in England. And I uh, toured it at one point in time and I found out why he had to shut it down because all he made was horse blankets. So technology took his business out just like it did mine. <laughs> Isn't that something then? <laughs> if, uh, if you look at the, you know, we have a number of black and white negatives. I'm sure there are in the basements of many homes mm -hmm. across the city and country. If, if people did find an old black and white negative or a color negative, it, are they still able to process that somewhere I, right now? They basically do a digital scan of it and then print it I see. On digital systems, yeah. If, uh, if people are looking at photographs in, in that digital world right now, are you finding with what you did with this book, uh, taking an image onto a digital format so you can kind of move everything around, is that easier to do? Well, again, going back to the great facilities we have here in the city at the local history department, uh, they have already scanned I think it's 65,000 images oh, wow. in their bank. Uh, and they very kindly uh, let me use all of those pictures in this book because otherwise, yes, the scanning would have taken forever. Uh, working with the uh, photographing all of the new buildings um, in there, yes, doing them digitally is a snap because you know instantly whether you've got a good image or not. We don't have to go back and photograph it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if uh we come back here after the break. Uh, we'll just maybe touch a bit more on the photography, but I want to dive into all of the uh, the stories you have of the pictures that you've got in the book and uh, when you're releasing it. So stay with us. We're going to be right back after this break. Mm -hmm. 